Hello friends, welcome to my YouTube channel Avatar Updates. If you don't know me, I'm Rakesh Negi and I am an aviation enthusiast. In today's session, I'm going to discuss about what is a thermocouple, what is its principle and what are the materials and combinations in a thermocouple. So let's first learn what is a thermocouple. Okay. What is a thermocouple? So a thermocouple is basically a sensing element which is used to sense the heat or we can say it can be used to measure the temperature. It is basically one of the part of a system of thermoelectric thermometers. Now what are these thermoelectric thermometers? These thermoelectric thermometers as the name says are used for measuring the temperatures. They play a very important role in monitoring the structural integrity of some vital components in the aircraft like the cylinder head in case of air cooled piston engines and turbine rotors and blading in the turbine engines. Next if I talk about the basic system of a thermoelectric thermometers it consists of a sensing element suppose this is the sensing element okay and suppose this is the indicator which is there in the cockpit and this sensing element is placed in which area friends as I have told it is placed in the areas where heat is to be sensed. Suppose I am placing this sensing element in the turbine section or the exhaust section of the turbine engine. So this will sense temperature of the exhaust gas. Suppose this is the exhaust gas so it will hit this sensor and it will become heated up. So once it is heated up okay some signal will be induced in it and it will flow by means of these wires or cables to the indicator and indicator will show the temperature and this indicator will be graduated in degrees okay so this is what a basic system will consist of okay i repeat again the basic system of thermoelectric thermometers consists of a sensing element okay that is the thermocouple and some special leads are there okay which will be used which will connect the thermocouple with the indicator which is there in the cockpit so friends i hope you got what is a thermocouple thermocouple is this one which is the sensing element sensing element okay and what is this indicator okay this is the moving coil indicator and this is the special leads i'll talk about these special leads in my some other session i'm just writing here thermocouple okay so the sensing element is a thermocouple so friends i hope you got what is a thermocouple a thermocouple is the sensing element which senses heat in the cylinder head temperatures region or in case of turbine engines in the exhaust section whatever heat is there in the turbine section of the turbine engines like especially the turbine rotor and blading area in that area we place this sensor to sense the heat and then it is indicated in the indicator okay next let's discuss about the principle of thermocouple okay principle of thermocouple so what is the principle on which thermocouple works the name of that principle is seaback effect so what is this seaback effect let's learn in detail okay so this seaback effect as the name says is based on the name of a great person named seaback who discovered this effect in 1871 okay he demonstrated that or i should say seaback effect states that when two dissimilar metals or wires i am taking this example suppose this is one of the wire okay and there is another wire of different or dissimilar material which i am drawing in blue color okay when these two dissimilar metals are joined at their terminals suppose i'm joining them now okay i have joined both the dissimilar metals and the name of these junctions which are introduced are suppose a and b okay so 
this effect states that when two dissimilar metals are joined at their terminals okay and their junctions are maintained at different temperatures suppose here i am maintaining a different temperature and here another temperature suppose here temperature is higher here temperature is lower okay then what happens is an emf will be induced or i should say a thermo emf will be induced in this this thermo emf it causes a current to flow okay so current is flowing in this so because of heat we are getting the current right so this is called as the seebeck effect now in this if you see this junction and this junction this one and this one this junction is at a higher temperature okay hence called as the hot junction or measuring junction okay and the junction which is at a lower temperature is called as the cold junction or reference junction so friends i hope you are clear with what is a hot junction and what is a cold junction if the question comes in exam i hope you will be clear with what is the measuring junction it is the hot junction what is the reference junction it is the cold junction okay next in practical design this hot junction is the one which is a separate unit used for measuring the temperature and hence this is called as the thermocouple proper what is it called thermocouple proper okay so which junction is called as the thermocouple proper hot junction why because the hot junction is in the form of a separate unit used for sensing the temperature it is located in the area where temperature need to be sensed okay and for indicating the temperature we have the indicator which is there in the cockpit right that is called as the cold or reference junction so friends i hope you are clear with seebeck effect so here you should note that friends the thermocouple principle is based on the seebeck effect okay and seebeck effect you have already seen just one point which i forgot to tell you is these two dissimilar metals they form a couple and hence they are called as the thermocouple thermocouple couple means two okay so these are the two dissimilar metals or wires which are paired to make up the thermo couple so after the seebeck effect was discovered during that time two more effects had come into existence and were proved and those effects are pelcher effect and thomson effect what effect p l t i e r pelcher effect and thomson effect so i'll first explain pelcher effect and then thomson effect so pelcher effect i'll explain here suppose there is one wire of material a and there is another wire of material b and they are joined together here okay this is the junction so pelcher effect states that when current flows through the junction of two dissimilar metals or substances then heat is liberated or absorbed at the junction i repeat again when current flows through the junction this one of two dissimilar metals or substances then heat is liberated or absorbed at the junction okay so that is the pelcher effect next what is thomson effect so for thomson effect we need a conductor homogeneous conductor okay suppose this is a conductor thomson effect states that when different parts of a conductor are maintained at different temperatures then what happens is an emf will be induced in that conductor and this will cause a current to flow causing heat to be either liberated or absorbed suppose this is the area having a higher temperature and this is the area of the conductor having a lower temperature that means the conductor in this area is having a higher temperature and this having a 
lower temperature different temperatures are there so because of this an emf will be induced in this conductor which will cause a current to flow so when current starts flowing in this conductor okay heat may be either absorbed or liberated so this is what is called as the thomson effect okay so friends i hope you are clear with the pelsen effect and thomson effect so friends i'll quickly summarize what all things we have discussed we have discussed what is a thermocouple a thermocouple is a sensing element made of two dissimilar materials which is used for sensing the temperature in the aircraft engines let it be a piston engine or a turbine engine in piston engine it is a cylinder head temperatures which need to be measured or uh, and in case of turbine engines it is the exhaust gas temperature which is generally measured okay so that is about the thermocouple next we have discussed about the thermocouple principle it works on the principle of seebeck effect seebeck effect it states that when two dissimilar metals are joined together at their terminals and their terminals maintain at different temperatures this side high temperature and the other side at lower temperature suppose then an emf will be induced that is the thermo emf which will cause a current to flow okay and that current is given to the indicator so the indicator is on which side the lower temperature side that is the cold side here in this example which i have shown you or explained you the uh, indicator will be on which junction side side b and a will be on which side in the engine side where the temperature need to be sensed hence this side is called as the thermocouple proper also this side which is having a higher temperature is called as the hot junction or measuring junction it's because we measure the temperature in this side and the junction or side which is used for indicating temperature is the cold junction or the reference junction okay next we have discussed that a basic system consists of sensing element special leads and the indicator special leads i'll discuss in other session and also i have discussed about the pelcher effect and thomson effect pelcher effect what does it say it says that when current flows to the junction of two dissimilar substances or metals then heat may be either liberated or absorbed at the junction after that we have discussed about thomson effect thomson effect says that if two parts of a homogeneous conductor are heated at different temperatures then an emf or thermo emf will be induced which will cause a current to flow and this will cause heat to be either absorbed or liberated fine next we'll be discussing now about the uh, thermocouple materials and compositions so let's discuss now so friends now let's discuss thermocouple materials and combinations friends if you are given an opportunity to select the thermocouple material what material will you select okay the materials which should be selected for use as the thermoelectric sensing elements they fall in two main groups one group is called as the base metal and the other group is called as the rare metal okay base metal and the other one is called rare metal okay so what are these these are the groups so friends i hope you are clear with what is base metal and rare metal they are the groups of the materials which should be selected for use as the thermoelectric sensing material now what do you understand by base metal and rare metal note one point friends here that the thermocouples or thermocouple material which are confined to be used in aircraft are the base metal groups okay and regarding rare metal note that the rare metal are not used in the aircraft temperature indicating systems okay and also friends by now you must be clear that for using the thermoelectric properties of these thermocouples obviously they will be sensing the temperature which will cause an electrical signal to be generated and that electrical signal will be given to the cold junction which is there in the cockpit having an indicator and that indicator is of which type it's of voltmeter type and it is a milli voltmeter okay what is it it is a milli voltmeter okay like this which is graduated in degree suppose this is the milli voltmeter it is graduated in degrees there will be a pointer suppose this is 0 degree then 100 then 200 then 
so this is actually a millivolt meter which is used as an indicator for indicating the temperatures let's say in a piston engine for indicating its cylinder head temperature so this comes in the cold junction and in the hot junction we have the thermocouple materials okay and also friends note one point that suppose this is a thermocouple here okay and special leads are here which are connected to the indicator okay this is another thermocouple lead which is coming to the indicator okay so these two junctions also create additional junctions when connected to the indicator right so these additional junctions can have parasitic emf okay or emf induced at these terminals where the indicator is connected so because of this parasitic emf there can be errors in the indication of temperature but remember that friends in practical applications whenever the system is designed the errors or parasitic emf effects are considered during the design phase of the system and these errors are eliminated okay so friends i hope you are clear with the indicator part which is to be used in the cockpit which is the cold junction and the hot junction being the thermocouple and so these leads are also the special leads okay or i can say wires so one of them is the positive wire and the other one is the negative wire okay so the material of these leads or wires is also very much important so that whatever emf is induced in the thermocouple that particular emf is carried and given to the indicator without any loss or without the development of any parasitic emf okay so now let's discuss these leads material which are used for the thermocouple okay so the base material will have positive as i have told you positive and negative wire so positive wire and negative wire okay i am to say the base metal will also have a positive wire and a negative wire as like this and the rare metal also will have a positive wire and a negative wire okay so i'll just draw a column like this okay so positive and negative wires we will discuss about the materials of these wires here materials and composition okay friends so what will be the positive wire made of and what will be the negative wire made of for the base metal thermocouple okay so the positive wire can be made of copper and its symbol is cu right and it can also be made of iron or positive wire can also be made of chromium So what is this chromium? Chromium is basically an alloy of, as the name says, chromium and Al. That is the nickel. Okay, chromium, chromium and nickel. So here, this chromium consists of ninety percent of nickel and ten percent of chromium Cr. Okay, so I am writing the symbols nickel and chromium. okay so ni is nickel cr is chromium so the chromium consists of 90% nickel and 10% chromium so what i have discussed as of now is the positive wire the positive wire can be made of copper iron or chromium okay next let's discuss about the negative wires or the materials which can be used for the negative wire of the thermocouple system so the negative wire can be made of constantin okay i'll use another ink constantin okay now what is this constantin so this constantin it is an alloy of nickel and copper nickel i am writing here ni its symbol so how much percent nickel 40% nickel and copper cu copper how much percent 60% okay that makes 100 60 plus 40, 100 percent. So out of 100 percent, nickel is 40 percent and copper is 60 percent. So this is called as the constantin. Hence, the negative wire can be made of constantin. That means when the positive wire of the thermocouple is copper, the negative wire can be made of constantin. 
okay now what about the other case if the positive wire is made of iron what will be the material of negative wire it can also be constant so this is an alloy again as i have discussed nickel 40 percent and copper 60 percent so this material can be used to make the negative wire when iron is used as the positive wire you can say constantin can be used as the material for making the negative wire when either copper or iron is used as the positive wire right next chromal so in case of chromal on the positive wire what will be the material of the negative wire the material of the negative wire is alumil a l u a l u alum means aluminium e l is the nickel okay so this alumil is an alloy of aluminium how much percent two percent e l is the nickel nickel is n i nickel is 90 percent plus 90 plus 2 is 92 and the other 8 percent will be of silicon s i silicon and manganese m n i am writing manganese okay i am using short forms or i am using the abbreviations of the elements so all these things they make up the material called as alumel so we can conclude that when chromal is used as the substance for making the positive wire then alumel will be used for making the negative wire of the thermocouple system so now let's discuss the material of positive and negative wire for the rare battle even though it is not used in the aircraft temperature indicating systems so the positive wire here in case of rare metal is made of platinum symbol is pt and the negative wire is made of rhodium this is an element and platinum and if you want to know the percentage the percentage is rhodium will be 13 percent and pt that is platinum will be 87 percent now friends i'll tell you which material is used in which application and remember that friends the application of these material it totally depends on the maximum temperatures in which they will be exposed to okay so this copper and constantin they are to be used in the locations or areas of the engines where the maximum temperature will be 400 degrees Celsius okay so this is the maximum temperature in degree Celsius okay I'll just erase this so in applications where the maximum temperature is around 400 degrees Celsius the material to be used is copper constantin right next the applications in which the maximum temperature is around 850 degrees Celsius in those applications iron and constantin will be preferred okay and maximum temperature will be around 1100 degree Celsius friends if you see the exhaust gas temperature measurement for the turbine engines it comes in this range for the maximum temperature okay hence note that the chromal aluminum combination of materials for the thermocouple system materials is preferred for the turbine engines turbine engines exhaust gas temperature measurement that is the EGT measurement and what about these two that is copper constantin and iron constantin they are used in the applications having these values of maximum temperature right so this is for the CHT that is the cylinder head temperature measurement in piston engines and what about the last rare metal group okay so this is to be used in the applications where the maximum temperature is around 1400 degrees Celsius okay this is not used in the aircraft exhaust gas temperature indicating system okay so we have to remember the base metal okay it is for the aircraft engineers to remember this base metal hence the conclusion is 
the base metal group is the one which is used for temperature sensing in the locations as discussed and overall if I talk about the choice of group that is the base metal group or rare metal group for use as the thermoelectric sensing material it all depends on the maximum temperature the sensing element will be exposed to okay so friends now I'll quickly summarize what we have discussed in the thermocouple materials and combinations we have discussed that the materials to be selected for use as the thermoelectric sensing elements fall into main groups that is the base metal group and the rare metal group rare metal group it is not used for the aircraft uh, exhaust gas temperature indicating systems okay it is the base metal which is preferred the choice of the group base metal or rare metal depends on the maximum temperature the materials will be exposed to and these are the temperatures which i have told you like for the copper constant and combo so this material combo is used in locations having the maximum temperature around 400 degrees celsius likewise for iron constant and it is 850 degrees celsius for chromium alumel it is 1100 degrees celsius okay so this is used for the turbine engines and these combo copper constant and iron constant and they are used for the piston engines for measuring the cylinder head temperatures and rare metal group this is the combo platinum and rhodium platinum so this side is showing you all the positive wire material and this side is showing you the negative wire material and here are the maximum temperatures on which these combo of materials should be used so friends i hope you are clear with today's topic today we have discussed what is a thermocouple principle of thermocouple where we have discussed about the seaback effect pelcher effect thomson effect and then we have discussed about the materials and combinations for the thermocouples. So I'll come up again with a new topic in my next session. Till then, enjoy learning this topic and thank you.